Hello, it's Ram. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to save your games. A good place to start is on the Godot documentation. I will show you how to save a more complex game. As a starting point, I have set up a small game project. This is how I start every new project. It is a way to decouple the game data and logic from the GUI. You can download the source code from my GitHub. But we'll go through a quick overview here so we understand how it works. The top node I call the controller. It holds a game object and the GUI. The game is not aware of the GUI. And the GUI subscribes to the game to manipulate and display information, but does not hold any game data or logic. The game object holds some systems and data. In this very simple case, I have an inventory, but you could have many more systems like characters, calendar, weather. The inventory has a list of products with two simple functions to add and remove product. And the product is defined by a name, a quantity, and a freshness. Here I override the init function, which is the constructor that gets called when we say product.new. I also override the toString method that gets called when we want to display the product on the screen. This simple GUI allows me to display the inventory, add product, remove product, load and save. It holds a reference to the game object. Notice that this init function does not have an underscore. It is not called automatically by Godot. So you have to call it explicitly from the controller. It allows us to refresh the inventory, for example, when we load a new game. The add product button creates a new product from the name put in the line edit and then a random freshness and quantity. It adds it to the inventory and refreshes the UI. Let's start making the save system. First of all, we define the safe path. You can see the user directory from the project menu. It's empty for now, as expected. Then you write the save game function. This function will be called by the user interface when you click on the button save. The save data is retrieved from the game object calling the save data function, which we will define later. We open a save file using the path that we defined earlier. And if it opens correctly, we store the save data using the two JSON function provided by GDScript. In the GUI, we connect the save button to the save game function of the controller. We have to define the save data function in the game object. It simply returns a dictionary with all the save data. And then we define the save data function again for the inventory object. The data for the inventory is stored into an array of dictionary. Each product calls its save data function to retrieve its dictionary. And finally, we define the save data function of the product. Let's give it a try. Run the game, add a couple product, put whatever name you want to put, and then try to save the game. If everything went well, a new file will be created with all of the information you want. It's now time to implement the load system. Enable the load button, connect it to the load function in the controller, and define the function. As we did for the save function, we create the file object we open the file given the safe path and make sure it's in the, the read format. And if we don't have an error, we use parse JSON on the text from the file and we feed it to the game. And don't forget to close the file and re-init the GUI with the new game data. Now open the game script and define the load data function. It takes a dictionary of data as the input. In this case, the function simply extracts the proper part of the safe data and calls load data function of the inventory. And you would do the same for the other game systems if you had more. The load data function of the inventory is a little more complicated because we have to recreate the list of product. So remember when we saved the inventory, we had an array of dictionaries. So after making sure we clear the product list, we iterate through every dictionary and create new product. In this case, since uh, GDScript does not allow to have multiple constructor, I just create a product with dummy information, and then I call the load data on the product I just created. This is to delegate the function to the product and keep the code clean, and it will help us a lot when we get more complex systems. Add the new product to the list and define the load data function of the product. So here it's simply to retrieve the name, the quantity, and the freshness. But be careful when you retrieve an integer from the JSON, you need to specify that it's an integer. Otherwise, it will be created as a float and it will cause some problems. 
Let's try it. Add a few product, copy it on the right panel just for reference, then save, then you can add or remove something, and then hit load, and it should work. You can inspect a file and see that it is not in a very nice format for readability. So as a bonus, I will show you how to beautify it. First go to the asset lib, download JSON beautifier and install it. And then you simply call the beautifier function before you save your data and it will be in a much nicer format for readability. Well, this is it. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a very good day. Don't forget to check the link in the description to have the source code and have a look at Buzzy Fields, the farm management game I'm creating.